Oh, hey, Ali. Uh, yeah. Uh, welcome. Yeah, you can definitely ask a question, anything you like. I'm just, you know, killing time, playing solitary, but I'm definitely here for questions. So if you have any questions, I'll, I'll gladly answer them. You know, I had a... Uh, somebody asked me... Uh, somebody left a comment uh, the other day on one of my uh, videos. And they said, you know, this might be a stupid question. But you know, they asked it, and I'm like, there's no such thing. There's no such thing as stupid, a stupid question. You know what I mean? I don't believe in that. So, people should always ask. There's no shame. Uh, Ali asked, can anyone get IT help desk job without experience in USA? Yeah. Yeah, you definitely can. You definitely can. Um, if you, like, if you look up some of the... Um, job listings out there um, you can see that a lot of them just require like a high school diploma and there are definitely some uh, uh, IT help desks out there who um, you know only require you just like a basic well you know you know high school education is pretty basic so basic education and they don't necessarily require experience not, not just in USA but any other countries you know and the reason behind that is because a lot of help desk, um, you know, because a lot of help desk and entry level positions, not just help desk, um, people, uh, you know, get hired on usually by like a large number, you know, because, you know, they need a lot of people to answer the phones and the turnover is typically pretty high. So the requirements are not as high to hire somebody. And the reason is because um, is because what they do is whenever they hire somebody, they just train them. They train them with whatever they need to, whatever they need to know for that position. Cause you know, a lot of help desks are very specific. So, you know, you could do an IT help desk for like, you know, some phone company, if you will, or you can do IT help desk for, uh, you know, some kind of a large business organization that has specific type of software that they use and of course you know obviously you know they can teach you on how to troubleshoot certain computer issues but um, when it comes to help desk uh, most of the time uh, whenever you get a call in a help desk um, it would be related to the specific system that's used by that company you know not necessarily true all the time like I said depending on what kind of help desk it is if you're help desk for HP tech support, then you're going to be getting, you know, you know, uh, calls related specifically to HP products. You know what I mean? But when it comes to anything else, they'll train you specifically for those products. So let's say they, they have some kind of specific software that the whole company uses, you know, they'll, they'll train you for that. And uh, don't, uh, don't be discouraged. But, oh, there's that classic uh, cards going down. Don't be discouraged if you don't have any experience. I mean, this is this is kind of point of uh, entry levels positions being out there is for people to get some experience. And, you know, feel free to, you know, apply for those type of positions. I definitely encourage that. I always say this. And I just help desk, like entry level uh, uh, desktop support jobs are the same way, you know? You know what, I'm gonna put this on, well, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna stay at medium here. But yeah, that's an excellent question. That's an excellent question. And, um, yeah, and if you know, you know, if you have basic knowledge of computers, you know, just basic troubleshooting, which most people do, you know, I, I uh, there's no doubt in my mind that most people know how to work on, you know, computers at least, you know, at least have they have their own personal PC and chances are at some point something went wrong and they were able to research and learn on how to fix basic computer issues. So just because somebody doesn't have on paper experience, like, you know, working for somebody um, doesn't mean that they don't know how to do the job. And this is what a lot of uh, companies that hire for help desk, they have this understanding, you know. So during an interview, they would basically ask you, they would ask you these basic questions like, you know, what would you do if, you know, somebody calls and says, 
I can't log into my computer, for example, you know. And then you ask them, well, what's the error? And they say, wrong password. And then you're like, okay, well, let me pull up your account. And then you can see if they mistyped their password and you can change their password and stuff like that. And, um, and or, for example, they can call, say, my mouse is not working properly or my keyboard is not, you know, some basic stuff where a lot of times it's just navigation issues, you know, especially this is what I see uh, with uh, when we started uh, where I work. I work as a business systems analyst and uh, when I'm not doing that, uh, I'm doing uh, basic just desktop support for a location that that I work at. And when we started moving over to like Windows 10 system, um, a lot of people were confused, although everything is pretty similar, but a lot of people were confused just because it looks different, you know, moving from seven to 10, most people are like, oh my God, where, I mean, things have been, have been moved, you know what I mean? But, you know, a lot of that stuff is going to be just user, um, not able to navigate properly through the system, you know? And, uh, uh, you know, these are the type of things you can expect in help desk, you know, tier one, you know, of course you have a higher level of tier of, uh, like tier two, tier three or whatever help desk. And that's something you don't have to worry about at this point. Really. It's just something you move up to once you, uh, once you get some experience and chances are within the same company, you know, but yeah, tier, you know, help desk tier one is just very basic and i encourage anybody to apply for those type of positions that's a good way to get some good some come experience you know not just when it comes to you know it experience but you know uh, uh customer service you know how to talk to people what are the things that you should ask them and what is the best way to deal with people you know because sometimes i mean this is a reality of things you get some really nasty people that call occasionally and uh you gotta you know you learn how to deal with those and, and that's something invaluable you can't really learn that in school you know type of thing it's incredibly important to kind of have those type of exposures too but when it comes to just learning about computers uh, anybody can really do it and learn about it i mean my channel is a really good example of that where you know you, you know i i strongly believe and always did that you can always teach people on how to do things, especially computer related. And, uh, but other things like interpersonal communications and, and stuff like that, it's just invaluable to anybody. I, I, I had almost argued that it's, I'd say it's almost as important as having the knowledge, you know, if you, if you have good knowledge, but don't know how to convey that knowledge, so somebody chances are you may never even move up in that position if you're into that some people don't want to move some people just want to do that one job you know and uh but if you have good communicational skills like you know you learn how to talk to people basically you know then uh there's a really good chance you'll be able to move even when you start doing you know entry level type of jobs Eventually, um, even your employer might encourage you if they see that you're good at your job, you have good um, IT skills, you know, you learn fast and um, you're good at communicating that. And, and that's, that's another thing that people kind of underestimate, you know, being able to talk to the customers and not just customers, but like when you start doing like other jobs that are IT that are like, for example, desktop support or, or what I do, you know, as a business systems analyst, you got to know how to explain how basically computers work without, uh, without sounding too confusing. Cause you'll always have people, you know, like kind of demanding to know, like if there's somebody really high up, like a big manager and he, you know, asks you, Hey, well, what's going on? As a matter of fact, I had an example today. Um, somebody worked on, uh, one of the big managers laptops and, uh, he basically re-imaged the whole thing, right? He re-imaged it and, uh, he did a really good job, you know, 
and uh, I just happened to be um, in the office when he came by to pick it up. This was like really early in the morning. And, uh, you know, he asked me, like, you know, what's this? Is this typical to like reimage computers, this and that? Because we had to reimage it, you know, for, you know, various reasons. And I had to explain it to him, and I just explained it to him once. And he didn't have any issues with that, but he just wanted to know if this was one of those typical things. And if you have a good way to explain that, then there's no problem, you know. So that's one of those things, you know, good to learn. And then if people see that, not just your manager, but other managers, then they, they, they see something in you and they'll encourage you to even get more education and this and that. And maybe even pay for your education or reimburse you for your education. This is very common in a lot of businesses in U.S. So yeah, definitely go for it. Hopefully that answers your question, Ali. <laughs> Oh yeah, my pleasure. My pleasure, Ali. I wish you best of luck, man.